Hey you guys, so this past month I went to KetoCon and I made it my mission to try every single snack from each of the vendors at KetoCon. And let me tell you, there was a lot of snacks. So I'm going to break this video up into three parts. So if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe because there's going to be a part two and a part three to this. And I originally wanted to do a review where I would say like, oh, this tasted yummy or this tasted good. And I realized I don't like sweets. The majority of the vendors at KetoCon were sweets. So if you wanted more of a review on the taste and texture of each of the snacks, then go check out another keto YouTuber I met at KetoCon. His name is Sugarless Crystals. You can watch him after this video. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go over, you know, the price, the carb count, the quality of the ingredients, and my personal opinion if I would actually buy it. And I'm going to put in a disclaimer that in this video, I am basing my purchasing decision off of the one product I tried at KetoCon. I know there are some amazing people working behind some of these products and I'm in no way trying to bash any of them. I'm actually super glad that there's more keto products out there because I know how it can encourage people to try keto or help them sustain a keto lifestyle. I just have my own preferences. And just so you know me a little bit better, I've been eating a ketogenic diet for over a year now. I never really bought keto products because it was always a hit or a miss with them. And while the convenience of keto products are nice, it can also be expensive. So for the most part, I always just stuck to making my own treats. Also, I'm not into sweets that much. I don't crave them or miss them like most people do. So while I might not purchase a lot of these products, I will make suggestions as to who this product might be good for. Also in the video, I might point out certain ingredients I might be suspicious of just because I'm trying to get better at looking at what's inside the product that are being sold out there. I'm by no means a professional, just a skeptic consumer. So let's begin. So first up is Swerve Sweetie, which everybody in the keto community pretty much knows Swerve because they are known for their confectioner sugar. The product that I tried out at the booth was the vanilla cake mix which I've never had before and I never knew it even existed but when I looked at the carb count they did tell me that it was higher in carbs than most keto friendly products out there one slice had three net carbs the whole cake is 36 carbs and the price of the mix was $7.99 on Amazon as far as the ingredients go um, they did make it with tapioca starch which from what I know on the KetoCon website, tapioca flour is banned. And I was trying to figure out what's the difference between a starch and a flour. I was only able to find one article online that kind of explained the difference between the two. And from what I understood of it, it was basically the same thing. I don't know how accurate it is. I'm going to link the website below if you guys want to check it out. Would I buy this product? Not this specific product. I'll continue buying their confectioner sugars. Don't get me wrong, the cake tasted great. I've just never really been a cake person, but it's definitely great for people who like cake because it's convenient and it's reasonably priced. Right across from the swear booth, we have Amy's Keto Kitchen Miami. And the product that she has for us to try is her cookie dough fat bomb mix. Her mix is priced at $10. It has two net carbs per fat bomb. The ingredients check out, they're very basic. Would I actually buy from her? I wouldn't just because I have all the ingredients at home and I can make it myself and they don't come with the chocolate chips which is the most expensive part so i understand why she doesn't have it but like i would buy it if it didn't if it already had it included because chocolate chips are super expensive but if you don't have any of the ingredients and you want something quick and easy then yes i would definitely recommend you guys buy from her so next up is Fawn Bone Broth. They're a bone broth company that my friend and I really enjoyed. It reminded me of my mom's homemade chicken soup. I really liked that they had so many unique flavors of bone broth that you just can't find anywhere. The product we tried was a trolley dodger. It has zero carbs and it's made from really good quality ingredients such as locally sourced pasture raised chicken. You can currently only buy their stuff in bulk, so six jars of their product retails for $72 online. So would I buy? Yes, but when they're in stores, because your girl isn't about to spend $72 on bone broth right now. Alright, so the next vendor is Alterna Sweets, a company I already knew about because I used their barbecue sauce in my previous video, which I'll link to in the top right corner if you want to check it out. The product we tried was their spicy ketchup that has two carbs per one tablespoon. It retails for $10.50. They have really good ingredients. They don't contain any starches or any suspicious ingredients. So would I buy? Yes, because the owner had us try the spicy ketchup with pork rinds and it just became my new favorite thing. So next we have Keto Beam. It's a fairly new electrolyte company that I've seen all over social media. I've seen a lot of influencers speak very highly of their product. I've heard claims that it gives you a boost in energy and that it can help you if you have sleeping problems. 
At the event, we've tried both the electrolytes and their micro boost. It's a two month supply that retails for $79.90 on their website. Their ingredients list includes a bunch of minerals and amino acids. I did recognize the necessary ones like potassium, magnesium, and sodium. But I also saw that you get bonus ones like gold, silver, and nickel. When I was doing my research, I found out that the reason they stand out from other electrolyte companies is that they the benefits you get from their product become 100% available to you immediately since your body doesn't have to break down a powder or a pill. Fun fact, I actually want a set of their products at KetoCon and I've been trying it out for a few weeks. It tastes like nothing in case you were wondering and like I'm sure it's doing something inside my body but like I'm not able to tell the difference. So what I buy, I mean if the claims they make on their website are true, this is a great product. But for me, I'm not trying to spend $40 a month on the electrolytes, but it's great for those who have the funds and want a convenient and more bioavailable way to get your electrolytes and micronutrients in. Next, we have the F-Bomb company, and my biggest regret was not stocking up on their nut butters because they were so good. We tried their macadamia pecan with sea salt flavor that retails for $24.99 for a 10-pack online, and their one net card per packet. As far as their ingredients go, they're basic and clean, so would I buy? Yes, because they're super convenient to take on the go, and it's an easy way to portion control yourself from eating a whole tub of nut butter. So next up is Wild Food Co. It's a mushroom drink company that you can pair with tea, coffee, or a shake. At the event, they had it paired with coffee, and I kind of forgot to mention that I'm not a coffee person. I don't care for coffee like other people do. The product we tried was a Cocoa Tropic Wild Superfood Elixir, and it claims to be a blend of super herbs that not only contain disease-fighting properties, but help with concentration, relaxation, and improving your mood. The ingredients look great, nothing stood out from it too much, it has 2 carbs per tablespoon, and a 4 ounce bag retails for $9.95. So would I buy? I mean, this product isn't for me, I don't remember it tasting amazing, but that could have been the whole I don't like coffee thing. But it's great for people who are seeking to gain those benefits I mentioned earlier in the form of a convenient powder. So next up we have Keto La. It's a fancy chocolate company from France and it's going to be one of the many chocolate bars I'm going to try at KetoCon. The product we tried was a regular chocolate bar. Half of the bar is two carbs which makes a whole bar four carbs and it was priced at $8 at the event. And the ingredients were pretty simple. It's made up of 85% dark chocolate, they don't use any preservatives, and they use erythritol and monk fruit as a sweetener. So would I buy? I wouldn't just because I'm not a big fan of dark chocolate and it tasted like any old chocolate bar to me. Plus, you literally couldn't buy one on their website if you wanted to. But they're great for chocolate lovers who want to feel less guilty of eating an entire bar of chocolate because it literally has the lowest carbs I've seen on a bar yet. So the next company is Strong Coffee. I'm not a coffee person, but I do drink it because I like the caffeine, not because I actually like the taste or the smell of coffee. So the product we tried was the original flavor. It has four grams of carbs per scoop. The price is $45 for the whole bag, which holds 12 servings. The ingredients are jam packed of keto stuff like MCT oil, collagen, amino acids. The thing I found interesting about this product was that one scoop is equivalent to two cups of coffee. Would I buy it? No, it's not for me, but it's great for people who like a strong cup of coffee that's easy to make and won't make you crash or give you jitter. Next we have Grapel, a granola company, and the product we tried was their rosy apple pie cookie granola. One ounce of their product is two net carbs and the whole 10 ounce bag retails for $12.99. The ingredients are the cleanest I've seen, they don't have any grain or starches, and they don't use any preservatives either. So would I buy? No, I'm not a granola person. It tasted great though. The apple pie one really did taste like apple pie. So this is great for people who like granola because they have so many unique flavor and it tastes great. Alright, so next up is Myoxines. It's not really a snack company, but more like a supplement one. We just stopped here because they gave us a shot of their chunky milkshake. The product we tried was the Myabolic Whey Protein Powder in the flavored chunky chocolate. Just kidding, it was just chocolate. Um, it has 4 net carbs per scoop and it retails for $67.97. They do use quality ingredients which kind of explains the price because they use grass fed cows that they graze on pesticide free pastures. Would I buy? No, because after my Herbalife days I never want to have a chocolate shake as a meal replacement ever again. But it's great for people who don't have time to make food and want a high quality meal replacement shake. So next up is Redmond Real Salt, also another company that's big in the keto community. Fun fact, this was my first time trying their product at KetoCon. I finally found out what all the hype was about. They handed out pocket shakers on the first day and those retail at $2.25, but you can also purchase a 26 ounce bag for $10.19 on their website. 
As far as their ingredients go, Redmond sets themselves apart from other salts because they are unrefined. They don't add fillers or anti-caking agents into their product, nor do they take anything out by bleaching it like other salts do. So would I buy? Yes, it actually tasted great. And I'm also trying to step up the quality of the ingredients that I use. It's actually in my Amazon cart right now. So next up is Monster Energy. The product we tried was their Monster Energy Ultra Drinks. They have four net carbs per can and the 24 pack retails for $32.28 on Amazon. As for their ingredients, it's packed with a lot of stuff, which is always suspicious. I can see they use two keto friendly sweeteners in their drinks. They use erythritol and sucralose, which can explain why they taste so deliciously sweet. I swear it tastes just like juice, which is scary. Would I buy this? No, I wouldn't buy this by the case. I like caffeine, but I'd rather get it from coffee instead of something created in a lab. That's not to say I won't purchase an individual one every once in a while, because it's the closest thing I've got to juice. Next we have Cremonelli's, which is a dry meats company you can often find at Starbucks. The product we tried was a Chipotle spicy and smoky salami minis. They have one net carb per serving, which makes it two net carbs for the whole bag that retails for $6.99 on Amazon. As far as the ingredients go, it does have sugar in it, which is funny because sugar is a banned ingredient like KetoCon, but it's such a negligible amount that it explains why they can get away with advertising zero grams of sugar on their product. Would I buy it? I mean, if I find them at a gas station, I'd probably pick them up. It's two net carbs for the whole bag. Most dried salami products out there are two net carbs per two links, so it's not a bad product. Next we have Curly Girls Candy. This is a sugar-free keto candy company and the product we tried was their hemp brittle. It has 3 carbs per 1 ounce and the bag retails for $5.79 for a 2 ounce bag on their website. As for the ingredients, they use 3 types of sweetener. They use an IMO syrup, tagatose, and erythritol. I've never even heard of tagatose but I looked it up and it's legit. I did look up the IMO syrup and from what I found online, there was a lot of information advising to stay away from it. They stated that it was a fake fiber, that it can actually spike your blood sugar. It's definitely an ingredient to look out for. So would I actually buy? No, like I said before, I'm not big on sweets, especially not on something like brittle. My friend on the other hand liked it so much that she actually bought a bag of it. So next we have Noosh Foods. It's a keto friendly snack cake company and we tried their blueberry flavor. It has three net carbs per cake, a pack of six retails for $17.94 on their website, and as far as the ingredients go, they use a lot of organic ingredients and use erythritol and monk fruit as a sweetener. So would I buy? I mean, I definitely buy the blueberry flavor for sure. It tasted super moist and it wasn't too sweet, and that's what I like. So next we had Keto & Co. They're like a pre-packaged mix company and the product we tried was a chocolate fudge brownie. Each brownie was one net carb. Their product retails for $9.99 on their website. And as far as the ingredients go, the only suspicious looking one was a soluble corn fiber, which apparently also goes by maltodextrin. That's something you had learned. But I also did some more googling and I found that this study ran by ketogenic.com showed that between an IMO and soluble corn fiber, the soluble corn fiber barely raised your glucose levels compared to an IMO. It's all very interesting stuff. So would I buy? No, it's not for me. My friend liked it though. It's great for people who have a sweet tooth and like a convenient fail-proof mix. Alright, so the next company is Peely Hunters. It's a nut company that has the highest fat and the lowest carb of any nut on the planet. The product that we tried was a Hazel Peely Butter Keto Blend. Um, it had 3 net carbs per 1 ounce. The price of the jar was $12.99. And the ingredients they used checked out. A lot of them were in organic ingredients and they used golden monk fruit as a sweetener. So would I buy? I mean, it tasted okay to me. I probably won't commit to a full jar, but I might pick up the single serving packets that they have because they really are a great choice for people who want the lowest carb nut butter with the highest fat content. So next we have Keto Bars. They're the original first pre-packaged Keto Bar. We tried their chocolate peanut butter flavor. A 24 pack retails for $24.95 on their website. They have three net carbs per bar and they have the most simplest ingredients out there. So would I buy? No, I don't really care for bars all that much. I mean, it tasted okay. This is great for people who want a good, clean bar with none of that suspicious stuff in it. All right, so next up is Keto Chow. Fun fact, they're one of the first companies I actually bought a keto product from. They're a meal replacement shake company that stands out from the rest because they're an all-in-one solution. Their product provides all the necessary nutrients for you to live a ketogenic lifestyle on the go. 
The product we tried was the raspberry cheesecake and the taco soup. And yes, the taco soup tasted just like taco soup. The carb count is 0.63 net carbs per scoop. The price for a bulk pack of 21 meals is $66. As far as the ingredients go, from what I can tell, there was nothing suspicious in it. But then again, there was a lot of ingredients and half of them I didn't know what they were. So would I buy it? No, I've actually bought one of their sample shake packets in the past. And while I will note that their customer service is amazing, I didn't really care for the product overall. But it is great for those who hate cooking and prefer to drink their calories. This next company is Marigold Snacks. It's a keto friendly snack company and the product we tried was their keto pecans. It was one net carb per one ounce and it retailed for $5.95 for a four ounce bag. And they use top quality ingredients like organic grass fed ghee and organic vanilla and organic maple extract. So would I buy? I mean I wouldn't go out of my way to buy them online but if I saw them at my Walmart or a gas station I would definitely pick them up because they were pretty good. So next up is Cauliflower Foods. I've actually tried their products before because they were so kind enough to send me a sample of their crust and crackers. My husband was a big fan of their crackers. I personally found them kind of dry but their pizza crusts were great. They were super flavorful and so easy to prepare. At the booth we tried all of their crust flavors. They're one net carb for a third of their crust, so three carbs for the whole thing. Two crust retail for $12.95 online. And their ingredients are great. They're clean and nutrient rich. So would I buy? I, I wouldn't purchase their crust because I personally prefer the texture of the fathead dough when it comes to pizza. But they are great for people who want a flavorful crust that's easy to make. I would go back to stock up on their crackers and maybe try the flatbreads I saw on their website. All right, so next up is Keto Farms, which is another company that I've heard of, but I've never actually tried their stuff. It seemed to be like a keto snack mix type of company. The product that we tried was the tomato pepper jack mix. It has three net carbs for one third cup. You could get three bags of their product for $24.95 on their website. And the ingredients seem super clean. They have MCT oil, which helps with, make, with keeping you feel full. So would I buy from them? It's definitely something I would pick up for sure. It's convenient, it's tasty. It has my three faves, which is cheese tomato and almonds so yes all right so the next booth we're going to is drink super coffee and i know i know i said i didn't like coffee and i don't but this brand actually got me to like coffee the product that we tried was all th i like i tried all of them but the one that i really liked a lot was the vanilla super coffee i guess it's just because i'm a very vanilla type of person but it has one gram of carbs for the whole bottle and you can buy a 12 pack for 39.99 on amazon and as for the ingredients, they look good. I had to look up gel and gum though, which from what I found out, it's some kind of additive meant to preserve the texture of the product. It's pretty common to find in packaged food or drinks. So would I buy? Yeah, i definitely buy it if I found it at a gas station because it does beat picking up an energy drink. And it also woke me the hell up while I was at KetoCon. So next up is Perfect Keto, another company that is very well known in the keto community. Fun fact, I actually bought my first and only MCT oil powder from them. Um, at KetoCon, we tried their Keto Bars. They have 2-3 to three net carbs per bar. And they have you could get 12 bars for $40 on their website. And as far as the ingredients go, the only suspicious looking ingredient I found was tapioca fiber. But then I found out that that ingredient is very, very common in a lot of Keto Bars. I did find some additional information on tapioca fiber that's worth checking out though. I'll link it down below if you're interested. So would I buy? Not the bars. I'm not big on bars. The one that I tried didn't stand out in taste, but they are great for people who are on the go, who want something quick and easy to eat in the morning or just to have as an afternoon snack. So next up is Keto Logic. This is yet another keto shake meal replacement company. And as you already know, any chocolate shake company immediately gives me Herbalife vibes, which I'm not about. At KetoCon, we tried some chocolates that aren't even listed on their website. So for the sake of this review, I'm going to go over their chocolate meal shake that retails for $69.99 for a 20 serving container, which isn't even a month's worth, so that's a whole lot of money. There are three carbs per serving, and the ingredients list is a long one. A few ingredients I recognize were erythritol and soluble corn fiber. So would I buy? No, it's expensive and you don't need it. I can see this being convenient for anyone that wants to start keto, but it's doing keto the expensive way, which it doesn't have to be. All right, so next up is BHU Foods. They're a protein bar company that are vegan and gluten free. The product that we tried was a white chocolate macadamia cookie dough. They have three net carbs per bar. You can get eight bars for $24 on their website. And as for the ingredients, they have tapioca fiber listed in their bars twice, which like I mentioned before is a very common ingredient in keto bars, but it's one that I'm keeping an eye out for. 
So would I buy it? No. Maybe I'll pick one up if I find one at Whole Foods just to try it again because it was super soft and chewy and it tasted great. But you won't catch me buying a caseload of these. Next we have Good Cultures. It's a cottage cheese company but surprisingly enough the product we tried at KetoCon was their sour cream. It has 2 carbs per 2 tablespoons and since it's not sold anywhere near where I live, I couldn't get you the price for it. The ingredients are good ingredients, that's the reason their name is Good Culture. A lot of words I didn't understand on the actual label itself, so I had to go into their about me to find out why they were so good. But apparently they use organic and non-GMO ingredients, grass-fed milk, that roam free, and they have no additives like stabilizer, thickeners, and artificial preservatives. Would I buy? I mean, I barely started liking sour cream. And I'm currently using the Daisy brand right now, so I wouldn't go out of my way to go buy this this specific sour cream, um, but I do like what they stand for. So next up is Love, and they're an ice cream company that sells dry ice cream mixes, which I've never even heard of before, but I found out that the reason they do that is because it's too costly to pack each ice cream with dry ice every single time they ship something out. But anyways, so they didn't bring the dry ice cream mix to KetoCon, so we had to try something else. And what they had for us was the chocolate bar with cashew, which um, 5 carbs for 1 ounce of their product. It's priced at $3.95. The ingredients are very basic. Um, they all check out. Would I buy? No, because it's a chocolate bar. I'm not a chocolate person, and it tastes like every other chocolate bar I've had so far. I would have liked to try the ice cream because it seemed interesting, but I couldn't find the ingredients online. So next up is Kiss My Keto. I've actually had the opportunity to have tried their products before KetoCon because they had sent me a package about a few months ago. One of my favorite things from that package was their birthday cake college and creamer i love anything birthday cake flavored and that product definitely nailed it for me it made coffee so much more enjoyable at KetoCon, we tried yet another chocolate bar but this time with pumpkin seed one box retails for $24.99 on their website a third of the bar is five carbs and the whole entire thing is 17 carbs as for their ingredients they seem to check out there's nothing too crazy inside them but would i buy you know this specific product no i'm not big on chocolate bars especially if they have pumpkin seeds it's just not my thing but that birthday creamer though, that's definitely my thing. So that ends day one of KetoCon. I just want to remind you that these are my personal opinions based off my taste and preferences. In the end, you can do what makes you happy. Don't think that you need these products to start keto. Keto is free, but these products are very nice to have. I'm grateful that there are people out there making these products accessible and available to us. It means that there's a shift happening and I am here for it. So leave down in the comments below if you've tried any of these products and what your thoughts are on them. Or let me know which brands you want to buy from and why. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.